there are known knowns, known unknowns, and unknown unknowns. But there are also unknown knowns. We are the ancient and esoteric order of the Jackalope, a secret society devoted to unearthing and sharing this forgotten knowledge. Today's episode, A Menace to the West, presented by number 13. I want you to picture the landscape of the American Southwest in your mind's eye. Now, undoubtedly you pictured some majestic vista. Monument Valley, the Grand Canyon, Zion, or the Petrified Forest, or maybe even just a flat expanse of desert, empty save for a handful of tumbling tumbleweeds. I bet you, somewhere in that mental picture, you had a saguaro cactus. You know the type. Great tall trunk, mighty arms branching out of it and reaching up to the sky. And why not? It's an enduring symbol of the American West. But it probably doesn't belong in your mental picture. Saguaros have a very limited distribution and grow only in the northern part of the Sonoran Desert, which means that in the United States they never occur naturally outside of southwestern Arizona. Despite their limited range, though, the saguaro is not endangered or threatened. That's thanks to the forward-thinking people of Arizona, who realized that the desert was an important part of the character of their state and enacted a series of laws protecting desert plants and their environment. These days, the biggest threat to the saguaro comes from landscapers. When some doofus transplant builds a McMansion in Arizona and realizes they can't have a great big green lawn, they decide the next best thing to do is to go all in on the desert look, which means having a big old saguaro or two in the front yard as a status symbol. Of course, it's illegal to take saguaro from the desert, and there's a very constrained supply of legal saguaro. So cactus rustlers go out into the desert and uproot plants by the thousands to sell for inflated prices on the black market. Arizona has combated this through vigorous enforcement, including a tagging and permitting system, backed up by steep fines and prison time for offenders. There are people who hate these laws, but Richard A. Countryman, who was Arizona's top cactus cop throughout the 70s and 80s, made a passionate defense of its necessity. It takes nearly a hundred years to grow these big saguaros, but we get a lot of people moving here, but they don't see the beauty or fragility of the land. Every year you have to go farther and farther out from the city to find the desert. When he was on the job, countrymen received death threats, had rocks thrown through the windows of his house, had the brake lines of his car cut, and had even been shot at. And still he went to work every day to protect the environment. Countrymen could at least understand the motives of black marketers. But what utterly mystified him were garden variety vandals, idiots who'd go out in the desert and try to uproot ancient saguaro with their trucks for fun, or people who went plugging, using the mighty cacti for target practice. And that brings us to the subject of our story, David Grunman. Grunman was born in 1957 in Johnson City, New York. After graduating from high school, he worked as a cook and a small-time drug dealer. In January 1979, Grunman and his friends John Corey and Stephen Barrows made an agreement to sell three pounds of marijuana to 16-year-old Robert Rabbit. During the deal, Grunman whipped out a shotgun and told the others to hand over all their money. An angry Rabbit tried to wrestle the gun away from Grunman, only to be beaten down by Corey and Barrows, revealing them to be Grunman's accomplices in the robbery. Grunman, Corey, and Barrows apparently thought there was no way Robert would report the crime. After all, what would he say to the police? I tried to buy some drugs from some guys and they robbed me instead? Turns out that's exactly what Robert said to the police. The three were in custody in no time. Grunman pled guilty to second-degree robbery and was sentenced to up to four and a half years in prison. In 1981, Grunman was released from prison. He packed up and moved to Phoenix, Arizona. Why his parole officers allowed that, I have no idea. He took a job working for the country kitchen and tried to stay out of trouble. Though that didn't stop him from the usual stuff, getting drunk, getting high, and doing anything dumb that came to mind. On February 4th, 1982, Grunman decided to go cactus plugging. That afternoon, he and his roommate, James Suhochi, threw two rifles and a shotgun in the back of their car and drove into the desert two miles north of Arizona State Route 74, just west of Lake Pleasant. And if you're wondering why a recent parolee was allowed to own guns, keep in mind that the Brady Bill was still over a decade away. The two vandals took aim at a young saguaro, only 10 feet tall. They put so many holes in it that it broke in half and toppled to the ground. Grumman turned to Sahoshi, smiled, and said, That was easy. So he cast about for a bigger target and settled on a huge saguaro not too far away, 27 feet tall and almost 100 years old. Grunman walked up to the saguaro, and at point-blank range, he lit loose with two rifled slugs from his 16-gauge shotgun. The violence of the blasts caused the upper portion of the cactus to break off and fall, right on top of David Grunman. He barely had time to yell out a panicked, Jim, to his friend before the falling chunks of cactus crushed him like a bug. 
So Hoshi panicked. He was alone in the middle of the desert and his friend was trapped under a two-ton cactus. He went for help, but by the time emergency responders arrived, it was too late. Grunman was dead. Maricopa County Medical Examiner Dr. Thomas B. Jarvis later determined that Grunman had died almost instantly. Dr. Jarvis also added, I've never seen anything like it. I've been at this job for 25 years and I thought I'd seen it all, but I never heard of somebody being crushed by a cactus. David Grunman was buried back in Elmhurst, New York on February 9th. But his story doesn't end there. The Arizona papers treated Grunman's death as a piece of entertaining local news, a mild tragedy with an unusual and ironic plant bites man angle. It even got some play in the national media, though they tended to strip out all but the most essential details. It was even featured in the Sunday, October 23rd, 1983 installment of Ripley's Believe It or Not. Um, I should specify the comic strip, not the TV show. Minus the grounding details, the story of Grunman's death left the world of fact and started to enter the world of urban legend. As people retold the half-remembered news item, they filled in their own details, creating new versions of the story where Grunman was alone in the desert, where Grunman was a mentally disturbed college student, where the cactus was twice as big and his death was more grisly and gruesome. And it makes sense. The true story of David Grunman bears structural similarities to the genre of urban legend known as the animal's revenge. You've probably heard a prototypical tale, say... Some sadistic cretins tie dynamite to a dog just for fun, only to be hoist on their own petard when it runs into their house or under their vehicle. Grunman's death seems like the next logical evolution of that story, the plant's revenge. But Grunman's death was not an urban legend. It was very, very real and well documented. It wasn't tragic or ironic. It was just dumb. In 1994, Grunman received the highest honor of all, when the second-ever Darwin Awards retroactively awarded him the Darwin Award for 1982. It would have been the greatest achievement of his life. Except, of course, that Darwin Awards are generally awarded posthumously. This episode was produced by David White for the Ancient and Esoteric Order of the Jackalope and is licensed under a Creative Commons Attribution Non-Commercial Sharealike 4.0 International License. All rights reserved, all wrongs reversed. The script of this episode, along with sources, links, and more, can be found on our website at orderthejackalope.com. That's order the jackalope with hyphens between the words. You can keep up with our research, release schedule, and more on our social media accounts. We can be found at Order Jackalope on Twitter, Instagram, Tumblr, and Reddit. If you enjoyed this episode, please share it with your friends, or your enemies, or even total strangers. We're not picky. Hey you, want to join the fastest growing secret society in the nation? Of course you do. But before you can be initiated into the hidden secrets, you got to share a hidden secret of your own. Visit our website at orderofthejackalope.com for more information.